What if DJI just released a drone that does both 360-degree cinema and full-on FPV racing in one chassis? Today we're breaking down the Avatar 360 versus the Avatar 2, what's actually new, where the real gains are, and whether the older Avatar 2 still makes sense for most pilots. Stick around because the battery, camera modes and the regulatory timing make this one of the most consequential drone launches in years. Let's get real about money. The Avatar 2 launched around $850. The Avatar 360 is clearly positioned higher. Expect a price range between $990 and $1300 depending on bundle. That premium buys you dual higher-end sensors and a rotating gimbal mechanism that can switch between 8K 360 capture and forward-facing FPV. If you need one machine to do both creative 360 workflows and traditional FPV, the extra cash might be justified. If you're only interested in raw FPV performance, the Avatar 2 remains the cheaper, simpler option. This is where the Avatar 360 truly diverges. Avatar 2 uses a single FPV sensor that's great for stabilized 4K at 60 frames per second. Avatar 360 packs two sensors in a rotating housing. In 360 mode, they stitch to 8K 50 frames per second 360 video and flipped forward, they serve as a high resolution FPV rig capable of 5K 60 or 4K 120 output, depending on settings. That means you can reframe shots post-flight, create virtual camera moves, or pull multiple angles from a single flight. The Avatar 2 cannot touch that flexibility. Battery and endurance matter. Avatar 2 offered about 18 to 23 minutes depending on how aggressively you fly. Avatar 360 bumps battery capacity by roughly 26% to about 38.7 watt hours, translating to roughly 25 minute flights in mixed use. That's meaningful when you're burning battery to power dual sensors and heavier processing. Unfortunately, the weight didn't shrink. Both land in the 377 gram range, so you lose the portability advantage that some 360 rivals claim. DJI chose performance and flight time over stealthy regulation exemptions. Avatar 360 upgrades the link to OcuSync 4 with quoted ranges up to 20 kilometers in ideal conditions and adds a much more advanced sensor suite. Four front sensors, added LiDAR and side sensors create near omnidirectional awareness which enables smarter active tracking and safer 360 capture. Avatar 2's sensor setup is much simpler and focused on FPV freedom. For creators who need obstacle-aware 360 tracking, the newer system is a big safety and workflow improvement. There's a weird urgency here. DJI is reportedly rushing this product toward market because of an uncertain regulatory deadline in late December that could complicate US sales. That explains the aggressive push. So who should buy? Pick the Avatar 2 if you want proven FPV performance, lower cost, and a light, nimble flying experience. Choose the Avatar 360 if you're a pro creator or studio who values 360 workflows, wants to extract multiple deliverables from one flight, and needs the longer battery and advanced sensing. If you fly for fun or race, Avatar 2 still wins on value. Bottom line, the Avatar 360 is not just an incremental upgrade. It's a new tool category that blends immersive cinema and FPV racing at the cost of weight and price. The Avatar 2 isn't obsolete. It's still the sensible pick for pure FPV pilots and budget-conscious users. 
Which side are you on? Are you Team Versatile 360 or Team Pure FPV? Drop your pick in the comments, hit like if this helped, and subscribe so you don't miss my full review on the moment these hit shelves.